New hiring beginning to pivot away from the pandemic norm of fully remote positions as large companies continue to form return to office policies. For a deeper dive on office demand and re-entry, we've got John Gates, JLL America's market CEO. John, good to have you here with us. What data are you looking at and seeing for some of what you're calling the midweek crowding of hybrid employees, 5 to 10 percent higher attendance, and the return to office being perhaps a little bit more crowded than perceived? We, we do a lot of client surveys and we have access to badge swipe data, which is the security access badges to get into office space. So you can track it that way. We pay attention to assembly space that's on the market, meaning uh, space that a company controls that they no longer want to occupy. So they'll put it out for subways on the market. So we've got various data, various uh, data sources. Um, when we're looking at the changing face of what this office, um, new office looks like, and you're looking at hybrid workers, how are tenants dealing with this? In other words, if you know you're going to have like Tuesday and Wednesday be the busiest days in the office, how do you adjust as a renter or as a leaser or as a company your footprint with those shifts in traffic just for a preponderance of like a few days? Yeah, we're still trying to figure that out is the honest <laughs> answer to that question uh, as we shift. But you, you just made an important point. What we're seeing is for organizations that have allowed some form of hybrid working, their people tend to be in on the same days. And they are for good reasons. They wanna to be together, that's part of the point anyway, to collaborate, to have meetings, uh, to, to kind of get to creative energy. But if they're all in on the same days, then you, you need close to the same amount of space. We are seeing some changes in space design to have more collaboration space and team space and work together space. And then, of course, amenities have become very, very important. So there's all types of uh, amenity space that are in uh, office buildings today. John, a lot of big companies, you know, we've been talking about Salesforce all morning long, but they're closing a lot of uh, corporate office space this year. What is the outlook for rents? Well, uh, technology companies tend to expand faster and then they contract faster in all cycles. I, I was just looking at some data this morning. If you go back to mid last year, tech companies were about uh, 12 to 15 percent of the sublease space that was out there. And it's now over over 50 percent. So leasing activity is is down. We had not fully recovered in terms of total leasing volume uh, post the start of the pandemic, but it had been creeping back up to about 70 percent, 75 percent, maybe even in some places. And it's ticking back down to maybe 60 percent of pre-pandemic levels. And when you see that happening, typically you would see rents fall. The, the one exception that we see right now is when companies are transacting, they're going into new uh, very nice space in part to draw people back to the office. So it, it's almost contradictory in terms of market environment, but we, we still do see very high rents in office leasing in most markets. We see peak rents in some cases because it, the leases are going into brand new buildings. Yeah, we're hearing about restructuring of costs and that impacts, of course, employees when companies are announcing some of the larger layoff plans. So that also impacts perhaps the seat counts that are necessary within the office environments that they do have. Do you see any perhaps even even churning of one office environment or one space into another one as companies are downsizing or as they've called it, right-sizing some of their base too. Yeah, if, if someone has the opportunity to, to do that, consolidate in a place and put other space on the market to shrink their overall footprint, they would be doing that. That's not something every organization has the space to do. I, I mentioned that the metric on technology companies broadly having over half of the sublease space that we see in the United States markets on the market, which is a huge shift. They tend to take space fairly quickly as well uh, to meet future hiring plans. So that industry sector would be the largest that could shift and do what you just described, meaning consolidate into existing space and put excess space on the market. John, besides this, this sort of tangible of how much space people are taking, what they're paying, et cetera, what's the biggest change that we're seeing within the office? Anything on the configuration front, for example? Yeah, there's more collaboration space, as I said earlier. So individual space, you have less of that overall in a lot of breakout rooms, collaboration rooms, whiteboard rooms uh, for meetings and managing that. And then the amenity space, that's really accelerated in the last few years. There's We have a, a neat kitchen on every floor uh, down in the common areas of the building I'm sitting in. There's a golf simulator. There's a very good workout room that uh, the tenants of the building can use, and that's become very commonplace. There's a, we have a, a coffee barista that uh, is within our space that our people have access to, and that would be fairly typical of what you see is um, 
lots of amenities to, to make it a little more exciting, a little more fun when folks come back to the office. John, uh, what, what's your address? Me and Brad want to head over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Dallas where we're lamenting a football game that happened last night, unfortunately. Uh, uh, the Philadelphia Eagle uh, in me is so sad for you, John. I'm sorry. Um, but at the end of the day, too, you brought up the amenity side of this. And, and for you know what I was thinking naturally was, what is getting people back into the office besides – the kind of return to office perhaps mandates that some employers are putting out if there is one thing that's enticing people to spend more time or to come back into that office experience what concessions are employers also giving up there the the biggest things that are that are working are food of some form and then social gatherings so if if a senior executive is in town and so we're going to have a, a mixer at the end of the day or a happy hour that's when we see the the biggest spikes and then many organizations providing lunch several days a week um, and, and or, uh, as I said, things after after hours. So it's, it's food and social gatherings are the top of the list. John Gage, JLL CEO of America's Markets. Good to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.